Ave Maria. Welcome back to No Apologies. Last vlog, we took a look at the biblical evidence for having and venerating statues and images of Mary and the saints. Well, this week we're going to take a look at the biblical evidence for actually seeking the intercession of those who are in heaven. So asking Mary and the saints and the angels to pray for us. And to do that, we're going to take a look at three passages from sacred scripture. And the first passage is from the second book of Maccabees, chapter 15, verse 11 through 16. Now in this chapter, we see the wicked general of Nicamor, who is a planning attack against Judas Maccabeus and his men. And Judas is encouraging his men, trying to stir up their courage by recalling to their minds all the victories which Israel has had in the past when God had interceded on their behalf. But he also encourages them by relating to them a vision which God had given to Judas. And we read about that vision starting at verse 12. What he saw was this, Onias, who had been high priest. Now, Onias had been murdered just before in chapter 4. A noble and good man of modest bearing and gentle manner, one who spoke fittingly and had been trained from childhood and all that belongs to excellence, was praying with outstretched hands for the whole body of the Jews. Then likewise a man appeared, distinguished by his gray hair and dignity, and of marvelous majesty and authority. And Onias spoke, saying, This is a man who loves the brethren, and prays much for the people in the holy city, Jeremiah the prophet of God. Jeremiah stretched out his right hand and gave to Judas a golden sword, and as he gave it he addressed him thus, Take this holy sword, a gift from God, with which you will strike down your adversaries. So in this vision of Judas, we see Onias, who had already been dead, and the prophet Jeremiah, who had been long dead, both were concerned about Israel and were interceding for them on their behalf to God. The second passage we want to look at is from the book of Tobit. That's chapter 12, verse 12. And in this chapter, we read about Tobias, who just returns home to his father Tobit with his wife and with the archangel Raphael. And the archangel heals Tobit of his blindness. Now Tobias and Tobit get together and they discuss how they can repay the angel for what he's done for them. And after they had decided how to repay him, the archangel Raphael tells him this, I will not conceal anything from you. I have said it is good to guard the secret of a king, but gloriously to reveal the works of God. And so, when you and your daughter-in-law Sarah prayed, I brought a reminder of your prayer before the Holy One. And when you buried the dead, I was likewise present with you. So the archangel Raphael brought a reminder of their prayer before the Holy One. He interceded for them to God for their welfare. We also can see in the book of Revelation, the souls that are already in heaven are concerned and are offering the prayers of those faithful on earth before the throne of God. We see in the book of Revelation in chapter 5, verse 8. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and with the golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy art thou to take the scroll and to open its seals. So the twenty-four elders had a harp, and they also had a golden bowl full of incense, which was the prayers of the saints. Now the saints that they're talking about is saints with a lowercase s, the saints that St. Saint Paul refers to throughout all his letters, just referring to the faithful on earth, those who are following Jesus Christ. We also see a similar passage in chapter 8, verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer. And he was given much incense to mingle with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense rose and the prayers of the saints from the hand of the angel before God. So the prayers of the saints went to the angels and then the angels presented those prayers before God. Now this idea of seeking the intercession of Mary uh, and the saints and the angels is rooted in what we call the communion of saints. By our baptism, we're all grafted on to the vine of Christ. It's sanctifying grace in our souls, which grafts us onto this vine. Those branches which are grafted onto the vine are also connected to one another. Now, the souls who are in heaven, they still have sanctifying grace and they have sanctifying grace in its fullness. So they can still be said to be grafted onto this vine. They're still part of the mystical body of Christ. 
Now, every member of the mystical body of Christ has an obligation to practice charity towards one another. So how can the saints in heaven practice charity towards us on earth? Well, they fulfill this obligation by being concerned for us and by interceding for us to God on our behalf. Well, people say, well, why would I want to go to Mary and the saints when I could just go straight to Jesus? Why would I want to go to a human being or an angel rather than go to God? And the answer to this is to be found in St. James' letter. Chapter 5, verse 16, he writes this, The prayer of a righteous man has great power in its effects. Those who are holy, their prayer is more efficacious than those who are not holy. Well, the saints have spent their lives doing God's will. They are now in heaven completely purifying of all sin. Their prayers are more efficacious than ours. And if that can be said about the saints, how much more can it be said about Our Lady, for reasons which we've discussed in the past? Although the saints were holy, Mary alone was immaculate without sin. Although the saints were all close to Jesus, Mary was the closest because she was his mother. And although the saints always strive to do God's will, Mary, who was the woman at complete enmity with the serpent, was the only one who always and in every way perfectly fulfilled God's will while she was here on earth. So the idea of seeking the intercession of Mary and the saints and the angels is rooted explicitly in sacred scripture. It's also founded on solid reasoning. Now this vlog today is going to conclude our vlogs of Marian apologetics. And it's my hope that for Catholics, that this series of vlogs has helped you grow in your understanding of Mary and has strengthened your understanding of her role in your spiritual lives. And for non-Catholics, especially for Protestants who profess the revelation of Jesus Christ, my hope is that you've come to the realization that Mary is a central part of that revelation and you can't sweep her under the rug without also throwing out sacred scripture, the writings of the fathers, and common sense. Thanks for joining me here on No Apologies. I hope to see you again. Ave Maria.